What kind of housing do you need for your rabbits? Three bay hutch and a colony. Cages and hutches. Rabbit colony. There's our rabbit tractor. I'm Lorella, and I'm gonna help you break down all the farming things into small manageable steps so that you can get started producing a homestead even if you're a busy professional like I was. The four main ways that people raise meat rabbits are in cages, hutches, tractors, or colonies. I've asked a few other channels to help me describe to you the different options there are for housing so that you can make an informed choice when you're ready to get your rabbits. We have been raising our New Zealand Californian Silver Fox mixed rabbits since last April uh, when we got our first three breeding stock and right before we got them we went ahead and built this three bay hutch using hardware cloth and some reclaimed wood as well as a metal panel for on top. Our setup is very simple. I don't have anything underneath of the uh, different bays to catch the poop. We let it go ahead and fall down to the ground. That way I can just easily come in with a shovel and put it in a wheelbarrow and take it over to my garden. And we actually keep our ducks in the same area so that they can come in and pick up any dropped food from our rabbits. We've had a lot of success with that. It keeps our rabbits super easy to maintain and take care of. I have a five gallon bucket over by the hutch with their food in it. And then I just simply have a pitcher um, that I will put water in to fill up their waterers. We just have very simple kindling boxes that we built, uh, just simple little wooden boxes. Um, I've enjoyed raising our rabbits that way. We've successfully had four litters of kits. Our kits stay with our moms until they're about six weeks old and then we will put them in a tractor and um, rotational graze them. Uh, before we process them at 12 weeks. It's been a very fun experience. I think one thing I'm really focused on this year is better timing with my litters. Um, we are in zone 8A and it gets pretty hot during the summer. Uh, this last summer we had several days over 110 degrees with the heat index almost to 120 and unfortunately I lost half of my litters uh, last summer on those hottest days. So I'm really going to focus more on timing our litters a little better. With rabbits, they're a very low maintenance animal and we really have enjoyed having them on the homestead. I really like how we have that setup done. We raise our rabbits in a colony and I started doing this because when I was younger and I went and saw a lady to get a pet rabbit. She was breeding them in a shed and I always thought if I was ever going to keep rabbits that's how I was going to keep them because they just look so happy. It just looks so natural to me to keep them to the being social and running around. Um, her environment was really clean but it was they were all in there together. We first got into meat rabbits because we didn't really have very much infrastructure here and we wanted something that was going to be quick and easy to process. I'd done chickens in the past and I knew that I hated plucking them. There are lots of different ways you can do a colony. There are a lot of people that have colonies outside. Unfortunately, we're here in New Zealand and we have got RCD, rabbit khaleesi virus, here out in the wild rabbit population. So we had to keep our rabbits in a shed to keep them safe from that. So we built this little shed and that's enough room in here for two does and a buck of a decent size. So we had New Zealand white does and um, a New Zealand white buck. Sometimes we had a Flemish buck. When I got pregnant with baby number four, it was just too hard for me to keep on top of all the processing while I was pregnant. So we gave away our meat rabbits and my children started raising mini lots which is what we have now. Uh, I have recently acquired a bunch more New Zealand whites and we are getting back into breeding them as well. Uh, this time I'm going to have them in cages because I want to really control the breeding program a lot tighter. I'm going to run a couple of bucks so I can run two different um, entirely different lines so I can provide breeding rabbits for other people. I love the colony setup for rabbits when you are uh, just a small scale a shed like this we can keep we've got two different age litters here we've got some at four weeks and some at eight weeks we've got the does and the buck um, we let him out every six weeks or so he does what he needs to do and then he goes away again but he's still within the colony he's still able to be really social he just can't reach the girls this 
cage that's actually pulled apart the buck escaped from this is where he lives while we're not breeding from him he's just down here hanging with the ladies at the moment uh, the bucks are amazing with the babies they make the best babysitters uh, it's actually the territorial does that you've got to watch out for um, but once the girls are used to living in communal social living they are um, really happy to do so usually so we have a nesting box over the back um, obviously plenty of space for them to run around for a basic colony setup it's ideal if you can have about two or three square meters per doe which is 20 or 30 square feet this just makes sure that they've got enough room that um, they're not too territorial and they're not if you get two sisters often they'll get along a lot better but if you are introducing two unrelated does together having plenty of space is really beneficial the upsides i find to a colony is one they can be a lot more social two you tend to breed a lot more resilient rabbits they tend to be a lot more robust especially if they're able to dig in the dirt and get those natural um, biota and stuff on them i find them a lot more friendly i have not had any problems with aggression from the does they don't attack you in the same way that they might in a cage i have kept them in cages before and had problems with them rushing at you when they've got babies whereas in the colony i think they've got a lot more space they feel a lot less threatened yeah and we'll find that they'll just come running up to you when you walk into the shed as opposed to running away from you a lot of them will come up for pets and cuddles as well. The other thing with keeping rabbits in a colony is that you don't control the breeding in the same way. Um, generally speaking, you just leave the buck to run with the does and the um, does actually control how often they get bred. So usually you'll end up with litters every four to six weeks during the breeding season. And then if it's too hot or too cold, they'll naturally sort of uh, create a bit of a rhythm and stop having babies in those times. Here at Plan B Orchard and Farm, we use cages and tractors. Here's our rabbitry. We have it made so that we can pull the tarps all the way up and get a full breeze all the way through in the heat of summer or close it in on a day like today when it's cloudy, rainy, and cold. I'm gonna leave you right here on top of the beehive while I walk over and open up the rabbitry and you can see how I get in to handle the rabbits, to feed them. The water's on the other side. I'll show you that in a minute. Hey Bun Buns, how's everybody doing? <laughs> Here are my breeders, nice and cozy. Their manure and the hay they don't eat falls through and I just put that in a compost pile to use in the garden later. Here are the electric waters that I told you about. I have them hung on the back side of the cage and they are top fill. And then they just have the spout on the front right there. We have an electrical cord run from the house up into the rabbitry. And then we have a, uh, what do you call those things? A power strip hung inside there where it's completely covered from weather. And then the extension cords are run and attached so they're not hanging down in the rabbit cages or on them. Depending on how you have your cages set up, one of the downfalls is the way mine are in a rabbit tree, they're not really mobile. So I can't move them around seasonally like I do with my tractors. So I have to come up with ways to make sure that the rabbits are cool enough in summer. In the summertime, I can raise the tarps on both sides and I've also got these fans attached to the ceiling of the rabbit tree. And so I can blow air on them Another thing that I'll do to make sure they stay cool enough is I'll provide each rabbit with a, um, I use a juice bottle that's 96 ounces in ice and the rabbits can get up against it and then they've got the fan blowing on them so they can stay kind of air conditioned where they are and keep them cool enough because we have hot, humid summers here in Southern Missouri. These are two of our three rabbit tractors. They also double as chick brooders when necessary. An animal tractor is simply a small cage made to be outside that can be easily moved around your pasture, farm, or backyard with your animals inside of it. There are several rabbit tractor designs out there, and we started with the basic design that Kevin and Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead use. We made some modifications though. We added wheels in the back. We added a raised section to keep rabbits off the ground in, in case the ground was wet. We also added this, what I call kickstand on the door. So that actually holds the lid to the rabbit tractor up when I want to get in to get rabbits out, when I want to feed them or anything like that. Hey mama. She's hungry. She's ready for some feed. 
the water bottles on these tractors do freeze up. And I have found that if I just put on a fresh water bottle every day, that I can, you know, they'll have fresh water all day long, it'll freeze overnight, and I'll just replace it the next day. Here's one of our nesting boxes. We use metal nesting boxes. There are several kinds that you can use or make. And then we just shove hay in there, and Mama makes a nest to keep herself nice and warm. And when we have babies, it's used for babies. And when we don't, they only have one in the winter when they need a place to get out of wind. Bye, Mama. Her ears changed colors for winter and it kind of freaked me out because I didn't realize that rabbits did that, but they do. We mainly use these rabbit tractors as grow out cages. What are grow outs? Grow outs are your rabbits that have been weaned and you're growing them out either to sell or to butcher. One reason that that's effective in tractors is because then those weaned rabbits can eat the pellets. We give them free choice pellets, but they can also eat grass. And I'll move them once or twice a day, depending on how many are in here and how much they eat down the grass. One thing you have to watch out for, and it's happened to me, is if you have a pretty small bunny in there, you have to be really careful when you're moving this cage because I've actually had one like nosedive off the platform and out the bottom when I lifted it and was pulling it on the wheels and uh, it took me a little while to catch the rabbits that were running around the yard after that. So they don't always do that, but it has happened from time to time, and that's just something to be aware of if you're gonna choose to raise your rabbits in tractors. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I put out weekly videos helping people just like you make that transition from city life to farm life, from dependency to self-sufficiency to growing and raising your own food. What's up guys, it's Justin here, and I'm here to talk to you about rabbits. I've been raising rabbits on and off pretty much my entire life. They're easy, uh, low maintenance, fairly disease free, um, and really fast growing. And the way that I raise rabbits is in cages and hutches. Cages are easy to clean. You've got the J hook feeders on the outside, You've got waters on the outside, and it also allows you to keep track of your rabbits. I know my does in this cage. She's been bred on this date, and I don't have intermingling. I keep my bucks separate, and it just makes record keeping a lot easier for me. Uh, the other nice thing about cages is they're pretty customizable. You know, you can make them whatever size you want. You know, multiple sections, same way with the hutches. There's all sorts of building plans out there for hutches specifically uh, that you can make them however you want. So that's definitely a pro to the cages. One downfall of cages is you only have so many cages at a time. But the thing that I really like about cages and hutches is it's so easy to get that gold that the rabbits produce, their manure. I garden, and so that's just an added benefit of raising rabbits. And with the cages, it's super easy to just scoop it out and get it in the garden. And hutches the same. With the hutches, like you saw in the ones I have outside, they've got their shelter right there. So when I have a bread dough, I don't have to pay quite so much attention to her due date. I just have to make sure I have straw in the back and she'll make her nest which makes it really easy. Now the downfall of that is if you have a doe like I've had that likes to use it as her restroom. That's kind of gross and then you lose that whole benefit of the manure falling through the cages. The other downfall is maintenance. Cages require some maintenance. A lot of the cages I have I inherited from my mom so they're working on well over 20 years old. Now with the urine and the ammonia that builds up and if the poop doesn't fall through, then you got some rust issues. That's just something to be aware of. You need to stay on top of it, cleaning it. The other thing is you have a difficult door. Um, then you're a little less likely to be apt to get in and water feed. If you have the water inside, you're kind of doing that trick where you're dumping it over the top and hoping it gets in. I have a few of those myself. Every time my mom does chores for me, I hear about what crappy doors I have. Mom, they're your cages. You made them that way. So I encourage you to take a look at cages. Uh, the other pro is rabbit cages can be used for anything. I also use them for my quail and I've used them for 
chickens that I need to tend to, you know, that need doctored up, that sort of thing. So rabbit cages are definitely versatile. They're not always just rabbit cages. Thanks guys. Babe, what's a rabbit colony? I suppose a rabbit colony is when you um, have a bunch of rabbits living as close to you can as they would be in nature. Particularly a bunch of rabbits living together, not separated individually by cages. They have access to dirt. They can dig burrows, roam around a little bit. Totally agree. A buck can service up to 10 does, six to 10 does successfully. I really enjoy that they can snuggle. Rabbits are very social creatures. I enjoy doing a colony setting for the reason that they can be as close to nature as possible. I like them living together socially, not in individual cages. Our colony is not exactly set up the way we ultimately want it to be. Roof's a little bit short. This is a chicken coop turned rabbit colony. So yeah. we have a lot of changes we're going to be making. We've only been on this homestead for seven months and we have some plans. Rabbit colonies can be more work. They're harder to clean. Um, as far as when you have a cage, they just potty through the cage, goes to the ground. So, you know, there is a little bit more work involved in cleaning. Um, they can dig and escape out. So you have to make provisions for that. There can be flooding in the burrows, so you have to know your area and make provisions for that. Up front, getting set up properly is a lot more work, you know. You've got you've to put perimeter fencing under the ground so when they do dig burrows, they can, they're can they not going to get out and, and whatnot. There's just a lot, more, a lot more work to get it set up, but once it's set up properly, I mean, you're, there's not a lot more work after that point. There's not, and your rabbits I think there's less stress because they're together and they're living as a family unit. Um, they're able to get underground and where it's cooler and warmer in all seasons. And so then you have a little bit higher success rate with the litters. I don't know. I think that's subjective. But I think ultimately all we can say is that we just like the idea that they're living more of naturally what's what they're naturally uh, inclined to live than forcing them in a little cage and mm -hmm. living like we would want them to live. For sure. Hi, Harriet. Um, but we do definitely control certain aspects of their living conditions, you know, just less than here's a cage, this is your space, and only your space, and this is what you'll experience in this little space. So you give them a little bit more freedom. And we've done both. We've done cages and colony, and we prefer the colony. We let our does dig burrows. We uh, sometimes will provide nesting boxes. Well, we do provide nesting boxes for them, but we allow them to dig burrows if the weather's right. We'll allow that to happen, allow them to, to kindle in those burrows, you know, give birth in the burrows. If the weather's bad, if it's a wet time of season, we're gonna plug the burrows as we find them starting to dig them. They can be skittish, they can be timid. Just like any prey animal, you, with patience, kindness, you can work through that and they can become great pets. And they can actually die of a heart attack. And so one thing with a colony, you have to provide them with hidey holes, places they can get away. Feel safe. <laughs> Raising rabbits is pretty easy. There's, there's minimal work involved. It's a really easy animal to keep. You just, they are a prey animal. You have to be really careful and keep them safe and secure in whatever setup you choose to put them in. If you have any questions about raising meat rabbits, be sure and leave them in the comments down below. That way I can answer your questions in future videos to the best that I can. And I'm gonna break it down as simply as I can as well. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Be sure to click right there. That video is gonna tell you all about why I think you should raise meat rabbits or at least consider having them on your backyard homestead or your farmstead.